If you've been working in Figma for a while, you've probably run into this problem once or twice. You kick off a new project, drop the client's brand font in, create a button, and the text is ever so slightly one or two pixels off. No matter what line height you give it, it just doesn't want to play nice. Well, until Figma gives us the type tools we need, I have a solution that just might tie you over. We can use some old Apple utilities and FontForge to modify the font file and adjust this position. So you no longer have to create components with crazy, confusing spacing values. Now, while the font file we'll be creating should work fine on both PC and Mac, you do need a Mac to create this font file. So let's get stuck into it. All right, so now before we get started, we'll just need to download a couple of things. So firstly, we need to download Apple's free font tools suite. So I'm just on Apple's font page here, and we're just looking for this guy down here, Apple font tool suite. So I'm just gonna click download tools. It might ask you to sign in, but I'm already signed in here. So it's just gonna navigate to this page and I'm looking for font tools for Xcode 12. I'm gonna click view details and I'm gonna click that guy there. Beautiful. And we'll just open that up and I'm double clicking on the package. I'm just following the prompts to get that installed. Wonderful, all installed and ready to go. Next, we'll need to install FontForge. So I've just navigated to the Mac download page. The link is in the description and I'm just looking for this download and install link. So I'm just clicking that guy there. And FontForge is gonna help us rename some of the font file attributes so that they don't conflict or compete with the font files that are already installed on our system. So I'm just opening that guy up there. And there we go, we've got the FontForge app. So I'm just gonna go Command Shift A, open up applications, and I'm just dragging and dropping that in. Looks like that's done. I'm just gonna close that, close that. And finally, we're gonna need some fonts to fix. So I'm gonna go on to Klim Type Foundry's website where they let us download a couple of test fonts for free. So I'm gonna go navigate to this guy. I'm just gonna punch in my email address. Agree to the terms and download those test fonts. Great. Okay, now we're done with that. I'm just gonna unzip this file and command delete that zip. I'm gonna open this guy up. Now the font we're looking for today is a font called Calibre. And there it is. So we've got the test Calibre uh, font family. So I'm just gonna boot up font book to get this installed. So it's just command space font book. And I'm just dragging and dropping that into font book. So now that those fonts are installed, I'm gonna go and boot up Figma and show you what we're going to be doing today. So I'm just opening up a new design file here. Now that that's loaded, I'm just going T for the text tool, just uppercase button. And I'm gonna go and use that test Calibre font that we just installed. I'm gonna set it to bold. I'm gonna give this a size of 16 and a line height of 20. So now that we've got that, I'm just gonna shift A. And just to make this more pronounced, I'm just gonna give this 10, 20, 10, 20 padding. I'm just gonna give that background fill, command clicking the text, setting that to white. Around those corners a little bit. And you can see here how off this center alignment is in Figma. Even if we change the alignment with these tools here, even if I change around the, um, the line height settings, no matter what I do, this text is terribly misaligned. Now, if I just duplicate this, convert this to outlines, just to emphasize the point, and then I house that in a frame and give it a line height of 20, this is how it actually should look. You see here, we're almost two pixels, in this instance, two pixels off uh, what it should be. Maybe three pixels off what it should be. So that's what we're going to be fixing today. So the trick here is that we're going to go and inject or increase the ascender values above this font so that it um, basically shifts the baseline of the font down. So to do that, first we need to copy 
our font file. So we are going to be changing the test Calibre bold. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste it into my desktop here. And that'll be the font that we'll be editing. Now we're gonna to need to boot up terminal. And now that we've got that open and running, we're gonna copy and paste in a command that's just in the description. And that's this FTX dump fuser command. And now that we have that, we just wanna make sure that we've got the D flag at the end there, because that's gonna generate our XML file. We drag and drop, hit enter. So I'm just gonna open this with text edit. And there we have our ascender value. And this ascender value is what we need to adjust. We need to increase it so that we have some more spacing in that ascender area to move that font down. Now, what to adjust it to? Unfortunately, it is a bit of a guess and check. And to make matters more challenging, it is not a linear scale either. For example, a 1% increase to this ascender property does not increase to a 1% shift in the baseline. It's more of a stepped relationship. So we might not get any change adding anything from zero to 100 to the ascender, but add 101 and we'll see a big change. So I'm gonna get that value and be plussing it by something like 160. So we've got 810 there. We're gonna save that XML file, close it. So we'll be running the same command, but instead of that D, we'll be putting that F. Make sure there's a space again and drag and drop that file in. Now we're gonna go enter. And you can see in that updated view, it's processed our XML file and updated the font file. Now there's just one more step. We've just got to pass this file through FontForge, give it a little bit of a rename so it doesn't conflict with the font that we've already installed. So I'm gonna just boot up FontForge now. And I'm gonna go and drag and drop this font onto the FontForge icon in my dock. Let's close all the notifications. And there it is. So we're just going to open up this element panel and go font info. And I'm going to have to rename just a couple of these um, fields here. So if I go Calibre for Figma, no spaces in this font name fields for Figma. And I'm also going to need to change this TTF names panel. And I'm going to change this family name to Calibre for Figma. And we've also got this full name. So we're just going to change this to Calibre for Figma. Now we don't know if this 810 value is going to work. So I'm going to append just this bold name with 810 and this weight with 810. And what that's gonna do, if this doesn't work, it means that we can generate a new font and append the new ascender value and let us flick between the two in Figma. So I'm just gonna hit okay. The reason why we've changed this font name is basically just to trigger this screen. So the change unique ID. So we could rename all this, but if that unique ID isn't changed, it'll actually conflict with the font that's already installed in the system. So I'm just gonna go change. And now we export the font. So we go file, generate fonts. I'm going to hit generate. And there we have it, there's our font. So if we boot up font book, I'm just gonna close this for the time being, don't save. So now if we boot up font book, I'm gonna go and drag and drop that font we just created in. And here you can see the Calibre for Figma font family name has been mounted and we've got that bold 810. So we know that this bold has that 810 ascender value and we'll be able to find that pretty quickly in Figma. So I'm gonna open up Figma again. And it's very important to close Figma, install the font and then reopen Figma. And that's because when you reopen Figma, that's the point where they upload your fonts to their servers for you to use. And now we're back into the file that we were in originally. And I'm just gonna duplicate this guy and you can see how this has got the test Calibre. So I'm gonna go and rename this Calibre for Figma that we've just installed. And beautiful, that's that bold 810. And you can see how it's not perfectly aligned in a geometric sense, but it is definitely more aligned in the optical sense. So just by adding that 160 on the ascender value, it's given us a really nice centered button. And there you have it guys, that's how you fix fonts in Figma. And then we have the after and the before.
Now that we know that value works, I will just clean up that font name. So we've got that bold, um, this original bold file that we know has the 810 value. So I'm just gonna open up FontForge again. I'm just gonna open that up. Quit out Figma. And go to font info. And we've got all these names, so we want Calibre for Figma. Figma. For Figma. We want spaces in this bottom one. And again, just to the TTF names file, we want this to be Calibre for Figma. And we want this Calibre for Figma bold. And beautiful, we want that to definitely change the unique ID. And just in the desktop, I'm hitting generate. So I'm just gonna close that, don't save. I'm just gonna install that font. So now we've got that font installed, you can see how it's just deleted that appended 810 value. So I'm just gonna delete that just to clean things up. And wonderful. And there we've got a bold which mimics the test Calibre. So we'll boot up Figma again, navigate to that guy. You can see the button's just gone to that bold value. And there we have it, a much more centered button. Now, if you're getting the same alignment problem in Figma and in the browser, you might be tempted to hand over these font files we've just created. But I wouldn't actually hand the font files we've created here off to a developer. And there's a couple of reasons that immediately come to mind. Firstly, we've only generated uncompressed files. These files are larger because they have a lot of additional glyphs and open type features we don't often need for the web. So instead, you'll want to be serving optimized files like WAF and EOT, which are relatively smaller. Secondly, we're not licensed to distribute these fonts. OTF files are often sold with desktop publishing licenses, not with a web license. Not only are font formats like WAF and EOT lighter weight than OTF files, they're often sold with licenses for distribution on the web as they offer some kind of licensing protection as they can't be directly used for desktop publishing software. So if you're having similar alignment problems in the browser, you might be better off getting a web license for the font you need to use and have your developer pass that web font through Capsize, this clever little package that enables the developer to reset the descender and ascender values of those fonts, similar to what we've just done, but within browser rendering. And there we have it. That's how I tackle baseline alignment issues in Figma. If you have any other tips or issues, be sure to leave a comment below. Otherwise, happy designing.